from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Listen, fellas, I want more money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 tom one 800 800 66. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, after going up the other day, 374 points. Correction, 371 points on Friday. Went down 373 points today. And oil had the highest one-day spike in history. Remember you heard the oil was going down? Oh, no. Oil jumped as much as $25 a barrel, depending on what time you were tuned in today. $25 a barrel. <laughs> and this is all based on the fact that the government is uh, planning on bailing out uh, just about any moron who uh, made a bad loan. It's outrageous. And, and who's going to pay for that? That's right, you. Whether they raise taxes directly or just simply devalue the dollar. And if you want evidence that the dollar is in the process of being devalued, look at the price of a barrel of oil spiking today. Uh, don't take my word for it. Look what happened to gold, silver, platinum, copper, and every commodity out there. They all shot through the roof. That's because when a dollar is worth less, the price of a commodity goes up in dollars. It takes more dollars to get the same amount of money out of us. It's that simple. They don't explain this to you in school, and so uh, they keep you stupid. They keep you uneducated about this. They keep America ignorant about this. And this is how they love going around saying, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna cut your taxes. We're gonna cut your taxes." Yeah, but we're going to have this little backdoor raising of taxes. And it's not going to be called a tax. It's going to be called the value of the dollar. The value of the dollar will decrease so that we can bail out all these big businesses. But then they say, oh, well, we're not, we're not paying more taxes. We're not increasing taxes. Oh, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. And I've been saying here, I am pissed off at lots of people here. I'm pissed off at the banks. I'm pissed off at the mortgage companies. I'm pissed off at the greedy people who thought they were going to get into the real estate game by buying property, something they knew nothing about, and then flipping it. I pissed at the irresponsible people who went and took out loans and credit cards they knew they couldn't pay for, bought houses, stated income loans where they could lie about their income and go ahead and buy a house they couldn't afford. I'm pissed at the government for letting it all happen. I'm pretty much pissed at everybody. And you may not be pissed today, but you will be. Here's Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. Matt. I am and I'm pissed. This is, I mean, we've been waiting, my wife and I, for literally years for the bubble to burst. And the thing burst, and they've got the the federal government coming in to, to clean up the mess for everybody. And it's so unfair. I mean, when I say we waited and waited and heard all of our friends about how grandiose so their house was, and we knew the whole time no one could afford any of it. We had to sit back and, and eat their crow all day and listen and listen and listen. And we waited and saved and kept our credit intact, did everything right, only to be kicked square on the balls by the federal government. I, I don't even know what to say at this point. We own a small recycling company, and the price of oil just went through the roof today. Everything we do is based on oil. So we got double smacked, you know? I mean, it, wh what's next, you know? Stupid qualifies as... I'll tell you what else. Now. Now, now, what's next? I would tell you right now. Getting a simple car loan, getting a mortgage, the mortgage you've been waiting for because you've been waiting until home prices come down. Yeah, we uh, sure. it's got to get harder and harder to borrow any money. Yeah, you know, right now we're in the process of buying a truck for our company, and the financing went through. And I have a seven hundred eighty-five FICO score, my and my and my company has never had a bad debt put against it. And you know, they they have ruined so many things for so many hardworking 
true blue Americans. And I, without question, think that a good taste of hard knocks is what the country needed. And instead, they wiped our chin for us. And that's just a load of crap. And it's so unfair. And all these people are calling and say, yeah, but we didn't understand it. If you're not smart enough to read the document, you're not smart enough to be a homeowner, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't feel any pity for you. I'm glad you lost your house. And I hope you never get another one. Because, you know, that's life. And that's fair The life. people who lost their houses are the people who kept you from buying your house. Bingo, Tom. I'm a bright guy. You know, I just knew it was a bad idea. See the don't... connection. Stop. I'm t not saying this to you. I'm saying this to everybody. Stop feeling sorry for people losing their houses. Feel sorry. These I'm... are the morons. These are the creeps. These are the people using stated income loans, lying on their applications. These are the people who, who kept you from buying your home as a responsible person who pays his bills. Yeah, tell me about it. And, you know, the worst part is is that, you know, like I said, we own a small waste hauling and recycling company. And due to the fact that this bailout came dropping out of nowhere today, oil went through the roof. You know, I spent over $8,500 a month on fuel, and I can't afford to buy a house. It's ridiculous, and those people are getting exactly what they deserve if they've already lost them. And they should just be ashamed of themselves if they take handout money from the government. You know, we, we, we might be renters, but I'll tell you one thing. We are not welfare, uh, welfare recipients, and, and that, you know, is it, got to count for something. Unfortunately, fiscally, it gets me nowhere. I agree with you, Matt. All right, Tom. Listen, buddy, have a good day, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry for everyone out there that, that, that is losing their house. Psych. Good <laughs> for you. That's right. All right, Tom, well, take me out with a bong hit. I quit smoking weed, but it might be that day. I understand, Matt. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm good, Bill. What? I don't know who I'm more pissed at. Like our own government, or are these morons that didn't read the fine print when they bought their house? The part that says, "Oh, by the way, you're going to have a balloon payment in about three years. That'll be about double what you're paying now." And these morons signed the paperwork, bought the house, and now they're giving it up. And now they're you know crying the blues. Boo-hoo. Yep. And the mortgage companies that gave them the loans, they're just, you know, they're, they, I basically, I feel that, you know, they're greedy sharks that knew that these people were going to go down, but they, they gave them the loan anyways. And now, uh, and now it's backfired on them. Well, there were yeah. no regulations preventing them from doing it. Yeah, you're true. Our government let them do it. And by the way, what do you think bailing people out is going to do in the future? It's only going to encourage people to encourage to engage in more bad behavior. Exactly. Because they know the government, meaning you and me, we will be bailing them out. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of that, I mean, these people that are collecting, here's another thing, kind of a side, on a side note, these people collecting unemployment. I, I work for a water company. I, I'll, have, I'll go to their house and, you know, I'll have to shut their water off. And, and uh, I, I go in their house and they got big screens, they got plasmas, they got iPods, but they're crying the blues. I don't have any money. I can't make the rent. I can't make my mortgage. And they're buying all this crap from, uh, you know, Best Buy, but they can't put food on the table. That's what pisses me off. Yep. You know, and who's for it? You and me. I totally agree with you. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Jeremiah on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Love the show. First time caller. Thank you. I just wanted to say that they should go ahead and let all these big companies fall. I mean, and if they want to, they want to tax anybody to start trying to bail people, bail people out, tax these executives that are making millions of dollars. You know, when now that these companies are, are falling down, they want uh, the regular people to pay for it. I'm not getting any of their money when they're making these record profits. Yeah, well, you know what? Your congressman and your senator are going to vote for this. They're going to. And, uh... I know you touched on this earlier with another caller about the party lines, but look who's trying to put this plan together. George Bush, a Republican. I thought they were against, you know, the government getting Yeah, get the government off far back. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people who are uh, heading these big companies that are in trouble now, you know, they're all, they're paying their lobbyists to, and they're, for the Republican, uh, politicians to get the laws to go their way. 
I mean, it's all just backfire and trying to squeeze every last drop they can out of people. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that you are right, Jeremiah. Karina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I'm a little nervous. I hope I don't make a fool out of myself, but I relate to your situation and many of these callers' situation. Um, my husband and I bought a house 10 years ago. I was 21 years old, and, you know, we worked hard, and we didn't, you know, get crazy when the housing boom just took off. We were responsible with our money, and now we're in the process of trying to buy a second house, but uh, with this government bailout, we fear that um, there's just going to be no um, no houses left to buy. You know, we're having a hard enough time as it is. There is competition out there to buy houses, and we have been trying to buy a house since May, and it's now uh, almost October, and we're just having such a hard time. Now, now you're having a hard time. Are you having a hard time getting a mortgage or a hard time finding a house? Finding a house. Uh, there's just tons of Really? Excuse me? There, there's thousands of foreclosures. How can you be having a hard time finding a house? Because there's competition. Believe it or not, people in my situation who are who have great... Um, People are pre-qualified. We can afford a house, but there's a lot of people who there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people in my situation trying to buy a house, and the competition. We're just getting outbid, basically. I, we, I have not heard of any uh, bidding on houses in in months. Well, where I live in this small little town, small little county that I live in, um, we have been having such a hard time. But now that the government is bailing out even more people who are who are in the foreclosure process, there's going to be even less um, inventory out there for us to even try to buy a house. So we are very frustrated right now with the whole situation. Well, you might have to broaden your your reach and look at other places because there's a lot of houses out there that are available. Yeah, my, my we we might just have to do that. We were looking maybe into we live in Ventura County. We're looking in Valencia, but that oh my goodness, with the my husband with my husband's job and my job, it would we would have to just change our jobs. And we have a very, we we both have very good jobs. It's just a lot. It's just a lot of pressure and getting the news about. Uh, about the government bailing out even more people, it's just it's just crazy. Yep, yep, it is crazy. It's it's lousy, and I know a lot of people are pissed about it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, I am one of the morons that you're talking to, and I couldn't agree with more with what you're saying. Um, I was divorced about a year ago. Uh, everything was good. Had a credit rating of, I think it was like 780. Uh, bought a home for, uh, $100, had a house payment, no problem. Paying child support, no problem. Uh, my downfall was I met a, I met a, met a young lady and, uh, just started filling my head with all kinds of ideas, although I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, the individual is ultimately responsible for, their actions and their predicament, uh, but she talked me into buying another home so she and her kids could move in with me, and that home was $330,000. Uh, I was of the firm belief where I said, you know, I told her, I'll never get a loan for that. I got a loan. And she said, oh, no, they'll give you a loan. And I went through the motions, applied for the loan. Sure enough, here you go, buddy. Take all the money you need. Uh, $2,500 a month house payment. Uh, rented out my other home for a little bit less than what I was paying on that, but, you know, it was like $70 less. It's pretty much a wash. Uh, at the same time, you know, being uh, divorced, I was recently pretty much starting from scratch as far as buying furniture and everything else. So I racked up the credit card bills. Uh, even when I got to the limit on the credit card, they still allowed me to keep charging, <clears throat> you know, and then they charge you. Then you miss a couple payments, and it's like, well, what happened? It's like, well... <laughs> I went over the limit. Why did you let me keep going? Well, you had such a good credit rating. We just thought you, you know, maybe you had a stumbling block and you'd keep up. I said, well, I'm not. So now what? So, well, well, we're now we're going to raise your interest rate and now charge you even more fees. I was like, well, that's pretty smart. Charge me more of what I don't have and see what happens. So, uh, right now I got my one house up for sale. I just recently moved out here, uh, to take on another job. Got my one expensive house up for sale. Hopefully it'll sell before they start foreclosure proceedings. But, um, you know, if they foreclose on my homes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fully prepared for what the consequences are. 
uh, you know, I made the decisions ultimately, and I'm, you know, like I say, I agree with you 100% on what you're talking about. Wow. And you are one of the morons, for God's sake. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Remember, you heard the stock market went up on Friday by 371 points. Guess what? It fell 373 points today. On the heels of the government announcing a $700 billion bailout plan. Oh, no. Bad, bad, bad. Let's amp up the speed of these calls here. Francisco on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, what's up? I just want to let you know that uh, it's pretty obvious a lot of people got rich off of this entire war. And, uh, you know, stockbrokers were happy when they were making money. And now that... Things are going bad, and they're realizing that. Well, uh, you know, again, I don't know what uh, country or planet you're calling from, uh, but uh, we have a zero-tolerance policy about using the S-word on the air. So uh, tell you what, when you come back to the United States and you know the rules here, call back. James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. I was just amazed about the a caller a few times ago that was talking about um, trying to lay some of the blame of Republicans lay it some on to Democrats, and I just was like amazed by it for two reasons. Like the first, it's like they have the executive branch and both Congress, both parts of Congress, and they're also the biggest preachers of um, deregulation. And how it just it's just amazing how they actually just still manage to this whole mess has been caused by their deregulation, like essentially. And this whole thing is just makes you think of Wall Street as like. Just a little teenager who was like, was always asking for no boundaries. And yeah, well, you know why? Right? You know why they tell you they don't want to raise taxes. The McCain's of the world and the Bushes of the world. It's because if they raise taxes, then you're going to know how much it costs when they make all these promises. Yeah, and then, and then they're always going to like. Eventually, somebody. For example, they're for afraid you're going to say, "Well, I don't want to pay for a war in Iraq if it costs four hundred billion a year." I don't want to bail out banks and mortgage companies at God, for $700 billion. And you would say no. So, of course, they love saying, well, but we're not going to raise your taxes. But eventually somebody's going to have to pay for the tax cuts. And right. Everything. And here's what will eventually happen. A Democrat, whether it's Barack Obama or somebody else, you know, just like the way Bill Clinton did, will get into office and will say, all right, now we got to fix this. And when they raise taxes to pay for it, they're going to call them a tax and spend liberal. But you see, it, the spenders, you, you know who the spenders are. They're all spenders. They're all spenders. Democrats believe in raising taxes to pay for these programs, and Republicans don't. But they all love to spend, all of them. And that's what you have to understand. They all do it. They all do it. Keith on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, long time listener. Uh, well, thank you so much, Keith. This uh, this whole thing comes from the top, and it has to do with ethics and greed. And at the same point, people are foolish when they take something at the light and to achieve something expected when it goes bad to have somebody bail them out. But the bottom line is, we these quote unquote CEOs are supposed to be paid these enormous amounts of money to implement plans that make a, a company solvent and, and stable. And when they, when greed takes hold and it's allowed to take place, if there's going to be a seven hundred billion dollar bailout, every one of the CEOs of those companies should be should have to forfeit, and those in their round table should have to forfeit the huge salary that they've been taking. If you're going to say that you're what you're the best in the industry in order to get me to have in this position, you have to pay me a huge amount. When everything goes sour, you should not walk away with a red cent. And Everybody's got their money and they've been paid, and now the, the big businesses are going to be rewarded. Because that's been the case. Yeah, I, I, I think, for example, it would be fair for the government to say, uh, yeah, we'll uh, buy the debt of companies that to have bad debt, but only the companies that didn't give a golden parachute to the CEO. That's it. Those The CEO should, they, first of all, their salaries are, are too far. How could you expect the person at the helm of a company? Uh, Sounds like we lost you. Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
if the dollar is going to go down in value, what does that mean for my future? Not good for your future. Every time the dollar goes down in value, well, the price of oil goes up, for example. I got one more question. Why were the thorns of Christ imprinted on the... All right. <laughs> I got one more question. Is always a hint that something bad is coming. So we're not going to let him finish that thought. One eight hundred five. I got one more question. The question I didn't tell the screener about. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Sal on the dial. I just came from uh, being a, through it with a stadium of thirty thousand guys named Sal yesterday. Sal on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Hey Tom. First time, long time. Appreciate your work out there. Out where? Uh, out in America. You're doing what every American needs to hear, Tom. Yes. Uh, what, the, what they don't understand is that our founding fathers knew about this hundreds of years ago. They said that central banks are far more dangerous than standing armies. Through deflation and inflation, our citizens would be homeless and destitute, and the lands our forefathers conquered. They specifically said... The You're a Ron Paul said, supporter, aren't you? 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How hey. you doing? Good. Hey, I got a question. I'm wondering. I'm tired of seeing all this money go to uh, repeatedly just paying things off that we shouldn't, but I'm tired of every year. Is it a surprise that there's 10 hurricanes, 15 hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico area, and we have to keep billions on billions to help them out? I mean, uh, Hurricane Katrina, how many billions? Galveston Mayor just asked for $2 billion, but every single year they got 10 to 15 hurricanes, and it's not over yet, and how many billions do they need? That's an expense, too. I mean, we got to stop finding ways to tell people, you cannot live within 50 miles of the Gulf of Mexico because we're not going to help you anymore. I, I agree with you. By yes. the way, the same thing should go for earthquakes. Uh, but, hey, you know, we, I, have an, hey, we have an earthquake, one, a big one, once every 10. Well, we, years we used to have them a lot more often than we've been having them recently, as you know. Well, that's, but the, it's not causing billions every single year. We're talking Gulf of Mexico... Every single but year. But you see, I, I think if people are building in dangerous places, when they're building houses uh, in the forest where forest fires are a danger, when they're building uh, next to the uh, banks of a river that's likely to overflow, when they are building in New Orleans and the levees are likely to go, I think it's time for the government to say, you can build anywhere you like, but here are the areas we're not going to help you. I agree with uh, Malibu's got their fires, too. And tell them, you know, I'm sorry, but we're going to stop. You know, when the fire season comes up, they're in danger. Mudslides, I go, but the Gulf of Mexico is just, it's, it's how it's just getting way bad. And I'm like, someone's going to take a stand of like, we're going to stop spending money where we shouldn't be. And that's every single year. We'll get those those earthquakes once every, a major one, every 10 to 15 years. But we don't get them every single year, Tom. But the fires, yes, yeah, same thing with those fires in those brushy areas over here in Southern California. I'm not going to deny that we also spend in some areas that it's getting bad. I'm sorry, rich people, but you know what? You can't live up in the hills to separate yourself from the poor folk by going way up there. We're going to stop helping you to from your house falling from its foundation because of a mudslide. I think that's only fair, Robert. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Gil on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay, Gil. Hey, I got a question, man. You know how they do the screening and the in when you go to the interview process and they see if uh, you qualify and by doing the criminal background checks? For for a job interview or for a credit interview? Oh, for a job interview? But oh. what if they do the same kind of check for your credit interview? Hey, credit don't, don't kid yourself. Uh, some of them are already doing it. Uh, there, there are uh, people doing background checks on people who uh, uh, apply for a loan. There are people doing background checks on you when you apply for a job. Insurance companies now do credit checks on you. Awesome. But it's kind you, of you like that. sometimes that some of the ladies who are pretty much uh, made to the economy pretty bad for us all, you know, men trying to get some houses and cars. What can you say? Well, I agree with you. Half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. The Dow Jones average, after going up 371 points on Monday, goes down 373 points today on the heels of the announcement of uh, the government trying to put together a $700 billion bailout plan. They're going to bail out the mortgage companies. They're going to bail out the banks. They're going to buy the bad debts of people who have credit cards uh, they can't collect on, whatever. 
and uh, they're going to you know devalue the dollar again, and it's going to make everything more expensive for you. And they're going to say, oh, no, we're not going to raise taxes to pay for this. Yeah, they'll just devalue the dollar. That's what they'll do. And that's why gas uh, will be going up in price, because a barrel of oil spiked up $25 today. $25. That's like more than 25% in one day, folks. But no one will ever explain this to you. They just want to keep us stupid. Bottom line. Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. I said Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What up, Tom? Not much, Jeff. Okay. I just wanted to say to the other guy who was saying uh, to the people to read the fine print, I was a loan officer uh, for the past two years, first year in the industry, made 97000 unlicensed. And basically, it's all the bank's fault. Uh, IndyMac, you got WAMU who's going down. All of them made a ton of money off of putting people into negative amortization loans. Uh, loan officers made four points. But aren't ba- wait a minute, minute, wait a minute. Aren't banks regulated by the federal government? Uh, yeah, but you know what? They're making the interest rate. So, I mean, I'm telling you, it was so easy to give anybody a loan. Uh, uh, the banks, uh, the banks definitely did that. Uh, but the government, but the government is complicit too, because banks are regulated by the federal government, and they do, they did not do their job. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not blaming it on them. I mean, or no, it's I'm not, not it just on the banks. banks. But... It's the banks. It's the regulators. It's the greedy morons who lied about their income to get uh, stated income loans. It's the yeah. morons, uh, the amateur flippers who tried to buy houses they couldn't afford, thinking they weren't going to own them for very long. They just paint them and flip them over to some other sucker. Yep, it's a, and I'll tell you what, Tom, I can't tell you how many loans that I've put through where, uh, you know, you're making up job titles, you're uh, putting down as much income as you want because that's the whole reason of a stated income, stated asset loan, which is called a CISA, is you don't have to prove anything. They were giving out uh, loans to people who have, you know, scores of under uh, 650, you know, under 620, and it's like, what do you expect? Do you expect their credit to get better over time? Or- Good question. Adam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? It's going okay. Long time, first time. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I was wondering, uh, how much of this money are we bailing out for these loan officers that were handing out loans to somebody they knew that couldn't get the down payment, and then they would give them another loan for 40 50 grand for a down payment? You know, I was wondering how much of that money is, is you know, considered a second. They will always get paid off last. I, I really don't know the answer to that question. All I know is that now the government, and that means you and me, we're going to be buying up all this bad debt. That's what we're going to do. $700 billion worth. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think about, do you think a lot of uh, illegal aliens got a hold of these loan officers and they scooped them up and, you know, these are basically... Non citizens that might have gotten these loans. I don't care if they're citizens or non citizens. I couldn't care less. Anybody with good credit should be able to get a loan. And anybody with bad credit should not be getting a loan. Right. So basically if uh you know, if you're over here on a on a whim anyway and you're not an actual citizen and it's it doesn't matter to me if they're citizens or not. I don't feel good about paying the bad debt of, of citizens or non citizens. I don't feel good about paying anybody's bad debt. I'm with you on that, Tom. Hey, Tom, take me out uh, Hurricane Katrina style. Hurricane Katrina style? Do we have any wind blowing or anything? Rain, lightning, whatever? Sounds more like a blizzard. Ah! Oh, well, okay, and that. Tom Likens. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Tom Likens. 1-800-5-800-866. It seems like you're a psychic because everything you said came true. It was like you were the messiah or something. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, damn, Tom Likens just said she would do that. And then she turns right around and does it. It's the Tom Likens Show. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likens at one 800 800 tom The stock market. Oh, yeah, it's happening all over again. Up 371 points on Friday. Down 373 points 
today. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, Alex. Hey, I, I got a friend. He's a professor at this university, and he, he was telling me something like he, he bought into something that every time the stock market drops one point, that his money doubles or something like that. Sounds like a scam to me. No, nah, I don't think it was a scam. It was some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of funds or something. And there is no fund that does that. I guarantee it. Guarantee yeah. it. You give me the name of the fund, and I will do the research, and I will come back with a report. Oh, I see. Well, I should just go ask him, I guess. Ask him the name of the guy, fund, so. and call me, it or email it to me, and uh, I will do the research. All right. Can you take me out with a bong hit, Tom? Here you go, Alex. Stock market goes down a point and his money doubles. Every time it goes down a point, his money doubles again. Right. You know, there are bear market funds that go up when the market goes down, but not to that extent. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, love the show. Thank you. Hey, I'm wondering why no one is talking about the amount of money the government actually going to make on all these supposed bailouts. No, the amount of money the government might or might not make. There's no guarantee the government's going to make any money on this. Well, you know, they're loaning AIG $85 billion at 11 plus percent. So they're going to make some, plus they have warrants of about 80% of AIG. They are not. I, I, wait a minute. They, they've bought AIG, essentially. The government owns 80% of AIG now. They own 80% of warrants to buy stock. So essentially they will own 80%, but right now they don't own 80%. But never, nevertheless, I think that also, you know, the 70 or uh, $700 billion that's coming, you know, in these bailouts, a lot of it has to do with the, this, uh, you know, mark to market accounting or mark to panic accounting that's going on. You know, Merrill Lynch sold all their subprime at 22 cents on the dollar. And I think that it's worth more than that. And I think people in general believe that it's worth more than that, but no one has the deep pockets to fund it. And there's a lot of unknowns there. And eventually, all of this is going to get. But I heard a story the other wow. day that one of the problems of the real estate business right now is they can't get an accurate appraisal of what real estate is worth. It's dropped so much uh, that nobody is even sure what the real estate is worth. Uh, they they can't even get an accurate appraisal. Right. I mean, I think that it's going to be worth more than 22 cents on the dollar. Well, I hope so, but we don't know that yet. Hopefully it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How's it going? Good. Good show today. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on uh, Alaska had to try to blame immigrants for some reason for this this problem. Sound like he was a KFI listener. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, you know, they're actually one of the ones to blame. I've noticed, you know, over the past years that that's all they were talking about. You know, all these all these right wing conservatives saying, "Oh, it's a great time to buy. It's a great time to buy." When you know they were talking about things, they were talking like things were good when they really weren't. Well, I, and I, they're the ones who are saying how great it is, how great it is. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, keep the government small, keep the government off our back. That's what we're doing. That's what we conservatives are doing. The government's off our back. Government's not off your back. The government now owns AIG. The government uh, is going to buy up all the bad debt. Uh, the government is helping Bear Stearns. The government is, is involved in everything. Exactly. Well, that's what I wanted to say, Tom. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom on the Tom Likas show. Here comes Cal. We haven't heard from Cal in a while. Cal, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. You vicious scene stealer. You know, on ESPN. Now I'm going to have to go and uh, DVD the whole thing and just uh, and, and, and just watch the scenes you come up in. Yes. Uh, Jeter, Jeter may have gone 0 for 5 last night, but, you know, there is no doubt that he will always lead the league in shagging supermodels. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't take it so hard, dear. Absolutely. Uh, of, course he, of course, he also uh, did that uh, fatty uh, Mariah Carey, didn't he? Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he gets around. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, no, the $750 billion that they're going to use for this is just a down payment. You mark my words. It's probably going to go double or even triple that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note was, you know, on a small personal note, I was dating this girl down in Orange County a couple, three years back, and she was arrogant just like everybody else down there, you know, buying home after home. I think she had amassed about six homes or so uh, based on basically stated income. And she was going around, and, I mean, you you. You you should I mean you you should have heard the way she talked it was like somebody doing an end zone dance like you know the the market was just going to go ever upward ever upward so anyway I haven't seen her in a couple of years uh, and a friend of mine who still lives down there in the Orange County area was I, I just happened to ask about her and see what was going on uh, well you know needless to say uh, this is the Irvine area and nobody's buying those overpriced homes uh, and so she stuck with six mortgages she can't pay and he mentioned that she was on a he mentioned that he had seen her face or her body or her likeness on an escort site so we know she's not doing that for fun and profit (laughs) oh well profit maybe but not for fun and probably not even profit because she's got to pay for those homes and she's going to keep them and she's probably not going to keep them (laughs) oh boy but uh yeah, no, it's you know it's an interesting time, and uh, you know people are sugarcoating it, but we may very well be looking at you know our generation's Great Depression. Uh, I, ho- I certainly hope not, but uh, I mean you know we don't have any money, uh, we don't have the means to pay off what we already are in trouble with, and uh, oh yeah, there is a war going on. Uh, so uh, interesting times ahead. You know, I, I just I just I can only hope for the best. I you know that's all I can say. Well, Cal, I completely understand where you're coming from. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Nikki on the Tom Liga show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Um, okay, so I agree with everything that you're saying, but I want to know what the alternative is to the bailout. Well, first of all, I don't think the government should be bailing out uh, bad debts of, uh, of private companies. Period. Okay. Period. I agree with that. And if that means that all those banks and mortgage companies have to go out of business, so be it. But then what happens to us as 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 a consumer? Well, uh, if you uh, lied on an application uh, and uh, lied about your income on a stated income application, or if you bought a house you couldn't afford, you deserve to get kicked out of your house. I agree with that. <laughs> and you deserve to have your house foreclosed and sold uh, at a discount uh, to a responsible person who can afford to pay for it. So basically the people that have been responsible won't get punished. Well, what's happening now is the people who are responsible people, uh, the people who work hard and save and don't spend over their heads, they will be punished because of the bad deeds of the irresponsible morons, liars, thieves, and others. Great. And so I I think that the responsible people should be rewarded, and the irresponsible people should be living under a freeway underpass with Ed McMahon. <laughs> all right, Tom, that's all I had to say. Nikki, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Dad? Not much, Danny. You know what? I, I think whose fault this really is is middle and upper class America. You know why? Because when money, when, when gas was a dollar a gallon, they're out there buying their their toys, their RVs, their big, you know, and now they can't afford them, and now whose fault it is? Well, that, that's not what's happening. I mean, what's happening is that uh, uh, people in lower income classes uh, got uh, stated income loans and lied about how much money they made. Bought houses they couldn't afford, thinking they were going to become real estate mini moguls, and they were going to you know paint these houses and then flip them over to some other sucker. Oh yeah, I agree. And now these people are boo hoo hoo. They're on the news. They're taking my house away. They're taking my house. It's like, why should we feel sorry for these people? Exactly, exactly. And but I, I, I mean, when I tell them that. Oh, uh, look, I, I'm a multimillionaire. I don't see but uh, rich people with RVs. Uh, saying they can't make their payments on their RVs. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see rich people driving RVs. Rich people stay in hotels. Well, you know what? They don't um, stay in RVs. It always comes down to the deadbeats. That's what always messes up everything. So. You're damn straight. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Doug on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, I'm going to try to do this without cussing, but how the hell is the government going to buy up stuff when they're in so much debt? 
How come they can't start paying off well, their own Well, the debt? way they do it is by printing more dollars and devaluing the dollars that you already have. Yeah, so we're screwed again, huh? Well, that's why the price of a barrel of oil spiked $25 today. Son of a gun. Well, hey, can you take me out with a bong rip? At least I'll, at least I'll be happy with that. There you go, Doc. What is happening to pot smoking during hard times? You gotta wonder. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Kirk on the Tom Likas show. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Hey, um, yeah, I just got a question on the, the mortgages. Uh, see, I used to have Countrywide, and um, they kind of bailed on me because... Uh, I paid my mortgage on time and everything, and they screwed a bunch of people over. How so? How so? Because uh, they were lying on, on about people in their jobs, like you were saying, and they uh, took a bunch of money from us and never gave it back when we first bought our home. Money for what? Uh, you know, like your down payment and everything like that. We gave them some extra money. And they never gave it back. And well, didn't you have an attorney look at all that paperwork and look at what you were doing? Uh, yeah, we did. They told us they were going to give us give it back to us at the end of the deals and stuff. Well, I'd love to see your attorney. The Tom Likas Show.